Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be joining you again today to do another research summary video. Just like with the last video that we did, this is really new, exciting, groundbreaking research. And so again, let's get straight into talking about it. So the paper that I'm going to be talking about today is this one. So it's looking at non ablative HSCT versus DMTs in people living with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. So with our last paper, I talked about the fact that it was published in JAMA, which is the third highest ranked medical research journal in the world. At the time, I said that that was the only MS paper that was accepted in 2018 into JAMA. And as when we said that, we believed that to be true. We knew that there was a mysterious companion paper that was going to go with that one. And that was in fact this one. So there was actually two MS papers accepted into JAMA in 2018, both right at the end of the year. This is the second one. So what were they looking at? Well, essentially they were looking at whether non-myeloblative HSCT was a better treatment option for people with highly active relapsing remitting MS than disease modifying therapies. Now again, just like with the last paper, I'm going to keep this video quite brief, this summary quite brief, and just go through the major findings, but we will be covering this in more detail at other times as well, especially in the Facebook Live video that I'll be doing on Thursday of this week, where I'll be able to answer any questions that you might have about this study as well as to go into more detail. So let's go straight into what they've found. So the first finding was that HSCT resulted in delayed disease progression compared to people on DMTs. So what that meant was that they looked at disease progression as an increase in EDSS by a step of one that was sustained over a six month period of time. And this happened less in the people who had had the HSCT treatment compared to those on disease modifying therapies. Now one important point to make here and why in the other findings I'm just going to be focusing on what was seen for HSCT is that the disease modifying therapies group had all different types of therapies grouped together. So because we know from previous studies that obviously these therapies have different levels of efficacy, some are more effective than others, it's hard to just make it this broad statement in terms of how they compare. As well as that the disease modifying therapies group didn't include anyone on alemtuzumab or anyone on ocrelizumab for, their, for differing reasons. So while this is interesting for the other couple of findings, I'm just going to focus on the results that were seen for HSCT. So the next finding was that having looked out to a period of five years post having the treatment done, only eight out of 53 people who had had HSCT had had a relapse within that five year time period. So that's obviously very interesting and in showing that not only can this be an effective therapy, but it can have long-term benefits for people um, with highly active relapsing remitting MS. The third finding, which I, I want to talk about in the last finding, which I'm going to talk about in this video, was that there was a suggestion from the data that the HSCT treatment actually reduced EDSS so that there was an improvement um, in disability, not just a stopping, but an actual improvement. Um, within the first year after the treatment, and also that quality of life scores improved. Now for me, that, that reduction of EDSS within a year after treatment is quite interesting. It's not something that I would necessarily um, have expected, um, but it's certainly something that I think we need to look at in a larger cohort of people. So this was a relatively small study um, at this point in time, but it will be interesting to see if that finding um, actually holds true in, in larger studies, whether we not only can use this treatment to stop, but actually somewhat reverse um, disability. The improved quality of life scores, again, this is interesting, very important outcome for people living with multiple sclerosis. What I will say about this, and one thing that we'll need to see again as we move forward, is this obviously wasn't a placebo control trial. Um, people knew whether they were having the HS, that whether they were in the HSCT group versus whether they were in the DMT group. So obviously there could be some sort of placebo effect there for the people who are on in the HSCT group, knowing that they've had this sort of therapy to, to think that it might have worked better, report an increased quality of life. But still very interesting and something that we want to see whether or not that holds up in future trials. So why is this important? What are, what are the main outcomes for this study? One, this is one of the first 
trials that's been done, controlled trials comparing HSCT to a range of disease modifying, disease modifying therapies in multiple sclerosis. So it's important that we've seen that and what we've seen is we've got an indication that HSCT could be um, a really effective therapy for some people living with relapsing or remitting multiple sclerosis. That's one of the outcomes of this trial. And I think it's starting to give us more confidence in this as a, as a treatment. There was no deaths reported in the HSCT group and the side effects and adverse events that were recorded you know, were, were manageable. This non-myeloablative part of the HSCT has to do with the conditioning, what's called the conditioning regimen, essentially the chemotherapy part that comes before the stem cell transplant. <clears throat> and this non-myeloablative part means that it's quite a mild one, which increases the safety um, of the treatment. And so you know, I think this is giving us more um, confidence as to how this treatment might be used in, in multiple sclerosis. And why is that important? Well, it just provides another option for people. Now, this isn't going to be necessarily the best option for everyone, and we know that's true of other disease-modifying therapies that are currently available as well. But the more options that we have available and the more information that we get so that we can start to determine who is going to respond best to which treatment is obviously beneficial to people living with multiple sclerosis. So we will keep following the story. We'll keep providing more updates on it. Uh, we'll go into more detail with this study as well, and I hope you can join me on th Thursday for the Facebook Live video, where I'll be going into this one in more detail as well. But for now, really exciting. It's great to see that 2019 has started with two really big, important papers uh, for people living with multiple sclerosis, and we can't wait to see what the rest of the year brings. Thank you.